you've joined us today to discuss the amazing world of science, adventure, and paleontology. Many of you love dinosaurs, and we do too, and we know there's a lot more to dinosaurs than just looking at them in a museum. For example, where do we find them? And why are they found only in these specific places and not anywhere else? How do they live? And how do they die? These are just a few questions. There are many, many more. What kind of questions do you have? And what is this process of observing, questioning, inferring, and recording called? Well, we've got a lot to discuss in the next three videos, but to set the stage, let's start with identifying the three main steps of dinosaur discovery. What do you think they are? Let's call them one, field work, two, prep lab, and three, collections and research. Let's start with field work. Before we head out, we have to pack up our gear, and there's a lot of gear. Have you ever gone camping with a giant rock saw, a jackhammer, and 200 gallons of water? Seriously, going on a dino dig is no joke. It takes a lot of time, money, and people to make it happen. Sometimes, getting to our dig site is as easy as parking on the side of the road and walking in a few hundred feet. But not this time. Now that we're here, we have to wait for water, food, and supplies to arrive on the helicopter. After all, we'll be here for several weeks. Today's dig is at a site that's about a mile away from camp, so it's going to be a bit of a hike. On our way to the site, I'm going to meet up with Jess and Randy. They've been out all morning observing rock formations near the site. This is a process we call prospecting. I think I'm gonna join them. We've been out exploring all day looking for fossils and it looks like Randy has just found something. Randy, what'd you find when you were out exploring? Well, we found bones and shells of all these different ancient animals that are over 75 million years old. Oh, how do you know that these are fossils? Well, we look at the color and the texture, and it's very different from the surrounding rock and sediment. So you can see, for example, this piece of turtle shell with all its dimples on it and this coiled snail. Wow, those are some really cool observations. Are there more fossils around here? There are. We're working on a dinosaur dig site just around the corner. Yeah, let's go. Wow, Randy, this quarry looks so exciting. I have so many questions now that we're here. Like, where did all these dinosaurs come from? And how long ago did they die? And how did they die? And what did it look like when they were alive? Well, this quarry has tons of clues that can help us make inferences that will help you answer those questions. Let's go take a look. Great. So we're standing right next to the Parasaurolophus that we found. <laughs> How can we make inferences and use the rocks to make inferences about what kind of habitat that animal lived in? Well, with this 75 million year old dinosaur, we look at both the rocks and other fossils and compare them to what we see in, in today's ecosystems and habitats to make inferences about the, the habitat that dinosaur was living in. Wow, so what type, are these all the same type of rock? Um, we have a variety of rocks here. Some of these rocks here are made out of silt and some are like this one right here are made out of sand. Oh, and it does feel sandy. Yeah, you can feel, it just feels like a really hard modern sand. Mm -hmm. And. So we can look at habitats today where we find sand and silt and see what sort of environment they were deposited in. And in this case, it tells us it was probably deposited by a river or stream. Wow, and we found lots of other fossils near our dinosaur. So can you tell us a little bit more about those? Yeah, we don't just want to find the dinosaur fossils themselves. We want to find a lot of other fossils mm -hmm. as well because they help us infer, infer about uh, the habitat. So for example, here we have a little uh, snail there. A bit larger snail here. 
wow. and some leaf and wood impressions and uh, a clam right here. And all these fossils also tell us that this was a habitat that was in and around fresh water. <laughs> Randy and I discovered a lot of cool new information at the Dinosaur Quarry. To make sure we remember all of our observations, questions, and inferences, we have to record all this information before heading back to the museum. We use field journals to write down our discoveries, using sentences, lists, and diagrams to record our findings. We can even take pictures. Natalie and I are helping to prepare the fossils for their journey back to the lab, while Carrie, our paleontology collections manager, records all of her observations, questions, and inferences. These field notes are very, very important to the work that happens when we get back to the museum lab. In fact, we better get going. If it starts raining, we could be stuck here for days. 